Hello, I'm Kimberly Acosta. Welcome to the Native News Update on Thursday, December 2nd. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. On December 2nd, during the trial of John Graham, witnesses testified that before any May Aquash died, she said she was afraid she'd be killed because others in the group suspected she was an informant. John Graham is accused of shooting Annie May Aquash and leaving her to die on South Dakota's Pine Ridge Reservation. Prosecutors say Aquash was kidnapped from Denver by three AIM supporters and eventually taken to Pine Ridge because the group's leaders thought she was a government spy. One prosecution witness, Angie Janice, said she received a phone call from another AIM member, member Thelma Rios, about Aquash in November of 1975. Janice testified that she was told something to the effect that Anna Mae needed to be brought back to Rapid City. She was an informant. Janice said also that on the same day, a group of people gathered at the Denver home of Troy Lynn Yellowwood, where Aquash was staying. Among those present were Graham, Arlo Looking Cloud, and Theta Clark. Janice said that the three took Aquash from the home with her hands tied. Yellowwood testified that on the day the AIM members showed up at her home, Aquash told her that she was afraid that they thought she was an informant. If they take me from here, you will never see me alive again, Aquash said, according to Yellowwood. Under cross-examination, Murphy suggested Yellowwood's testimony was inconsistent with statements about the case that she previously made. Aquash, a member of the Mi'kmaq tribe of Nova Scotia, was 30 when she died. Her death came about after six months after two FBI agents were gunned down in a shootout with AIM members and two years after she participated in AIM's 71-day occupation of South Dakota's reservation town of Wounded Knee. In a historic vote November 30th, the United States House of Representatives passed the $3.4 billion Cobell Settlement as part of H.R. 4387, the Claims Resolution Act of 2010. The Claims Resolution Act of 2010 now moves to President Obama's desk for signature. The Cobell Settlement resolves the long-running class action litigation over mismanagement of Indian Trust funds. It also includes payment for resource mismanagement and funds for consolidation of fractionated lands. The case has been pending since 1996. In recent weeks, the Cobell Settlement moved forward rapidly in the Senate as budget-neutral legislation after lingering for the last year in both houses. Unresolved for 14 years, the settlement was part of a number of historic measures included in the Claims Resolution Act of 2010. In addition to the Cobell Settlement, historic water settlements vital to Indian Country, totaling over $1 billion, were passed as part of H.R. 4387. The water settlements involved the Crow Tribe, Tahos Pueblo, the White Mountain Apache Tribe, and the Ahmad Settlement. As cold and flu season approach, you may be stocking up on pricey over-the-counter medicines, but if you want a natural, more affordable way to stay healthy and fight a cold, try Slippery Elm. According to the University of Maryland's Medical Center, Slippery Elm is a Native American herbal remedy that has been used to relieve co the common cold symptoms, including cough, sore throat, upset stomach, and diarrhea. Slippery Elm is a tree, but the medical part is taken from the inner bark. It is known as a slippery elm because when mixed with water, it becomes a slick gel. This gel is rich with antioxidants and coats your throat, stomach lining, and intestines, providing relief. Slippery elm can be made into a tea or it can be purchased in the form of a throat lodgings or in a powdered bark form. Tahos painter Giovanna Papanati received a letter from the Vatican honoring her for a book of paintings that she created. The book is the story of Native American woman named Kateri, who the Catholic Church is looking to canonize as a saint. Papanati sent the book directly to Pope Benedict XVI, but said she had no idea that she would get a reply. Actress Kimberly Norris Guerrero still gets recognized as Jerry's girlfriend in the Cigar Store Indian episode from Seinfeld sitcom. This time as the best friend, she turns an unwished wedding into an extravaganza in Algonquin, a romantic comedy for the box office being produced by New Life Entertainment International. Cast as a Pocahontas descendant, mildly obsessed with playing the princess in reenactments, Guerrero says Algonquin is like Pride and Prejudice meets Northern Exposure. An ancestral marriage contracted forces 
a reluctant bride, the best friend of Guerrero's character, to marry a groom she loathes but has birthrights to the same untamed woods she must safeguard as successfully as her forefathers. Of Covell, Salish Kootenai, and Cherokee heritage, Guerrero speaks about wellness and the arts on reservations and in First Nation communities across the country. Actor Johnny Depp had such a positive experience filming with Angelina Jolie in his newest role in The Tourist that he is now interested in teaming up with Jolie's partner, Brad Pitt. Depp threw Pitt's name in the mix to play the lead role in the Lone Ranger remake in which Depp will play the role of Tonto. The Disney project is set to be released in 2012. Depp, whose, Depp, whose part Cherokee, is deeply committed to the project and particularly to the way Native Americans are portrayed. Native Americans in cinema over the past however many decades have been treated somewhat shabbily, he said. This one has plans to rectify that, he added, about the new version of the classic Western film and TV show. And that's the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me, and have a grand day.